let me welcome everybody to Book Chat, where I have the pleasure of hosting two fabulous poets, Sherry and Zoe Grant. And we are going to talk to them from the far reaches of New Zealand. And as you know, um, this book chat is always about discovering a book that you might want to read or you might want to give as a gift to a friend, but mostly to help with self care, to improve your personal well being. And as I mentioned um, in the past, I come to this world of arts and healing, uh, or I come to this world of home care through arts and healing. And what I bring to Assisting Hands Home Care is this concept of free medicine. <coughs> Excuse me. So um, the idea of making art improves your well being. And that research was done years ago by Dr. Jean Cohen, who was one of my mentors. And now I get to pass that knowledge on through the internet, through live classes and teach people how to enjoy that. So as I go around my world, I meet interesting people and Sherry and I met um, on Zoom through my program called Death Cafe. And we talked and she seemed like a really interesting person. And then she said, oh, and by the way, my daughter's a poet also. And I was like, oh, I gotta, I gotta meet this fabulous girl. So we're all here together now. And um, I'm gonna introduce, I'm gonna ask you all to stay on mute, but I'm gonna ask Sherry to unmute. And if you wanna look at her website, which we're gonna do together in a little bit, it's here on the screen and that's how to get in touch with her. So Sherry, Zoe, welcome to Book Chat. Hi, Hi, thank you for inviting us. You're very welcome. So um, Zoe's just getting ready to go to school this morning. Or Oh, I no, guess... actually, it's just actually school holidays. Oh, not perfect. Kind of so you woke so... up just for me. Wow, yes. <laughs> you're a star. You are a star. I already had a, a meeting with the Scriabin Society of America. I'm actually a board member now. So. Oh, that's great. <laughs> working on a yeah organizing the festival for his uh, 150th birthday at the end of this year so and so which organization fun. is that uh square Albion society oh, of the america Scriabin society wonderful oh what yeah. a prestigious it's just been reinstated going. this year as well so fantastic well mm -hmm. so sherry has um an amazing creative side she is a musician world renowned and she is a poet and zoe I want to know how you got interested in writing poetry. Well, it was my mom who started poetry first, and it was like, hmm, poetry sounds kind of cool. Why don't I try and give it a go? <laughs> That's great. That's great. And do you want to give us an example of one of your haikus? Drop this. Actually, I have um, one award-winning haiku from 2021, the junior winning. Yeah, do you want to read it? It's called Snowy Night, the Smell of Hot Soup. Yeah. We also started a lot of different projects, um, poetry related. Um, the first one we actually started was during the, uh, a very long lockdown in Auckland last year in September. We just, oh, we got really bored. <laughs> like, the kids got bored with the lockdown. So we started, we saw a friend doing like, um, they just chalked the um, haiku on their sidewalk, but there was no illustration. We thought, well, and, and we just, just before that, we went on a trip, right? A haiku workshop. Yeah. Where was it? Kati Kati? Yeah, I think it was, it was out of Auckland. And anyway, there was, um, there, there was a haiku park where they had a lot of haiku, actually, they, 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 they got the um, haiku in the stones. So you can walk around the park and just admire, read uh, those haikus. And, and we thought we could do something like that, except that we don't have stones. We, we just use, use the chalk. So we created chalk on the walk haiku 
and and then later on we started talk on the walk monoku as well that's like a one line haiku that's the actually the original form uh haiku in in japan where you could see like uh, in a lot of the japanese paintings with haiku is actually all just in one line but the japanese they know where to divide into like three parts yeah so um in america when we're taught haiku we're taught the 757 oh 575 i mean five seven. I'm dyslexic. <laughs> Don't worry about me. Five, seven, five. And, and what that means to so those of you who have never written haiku or who haven't read haiku is that it has to have five syllables in the first line, seven syllables in the second line, and five syllables in the third line. And that's a structure. So it makes you think and it gets you creative. You can make a poem with any number of syllables, right? But this kind of gives you a structure. Mm -hmm. And, um, oh, I wanted to see if you had that. Uh, there yeah. it is. And this mm -hmm. is what poetry can look like when it's written, too, yeah. which is very cool. But Zoe wants to say something about 575 because that okay, is very old fashioned, right? Yes. Do you want to say something about why we, do, why we don't do 575 anymore? Well, for. For Japanese, they mostly use 575, and for English, they mostly use random. But yeah, and it's more like short, long, and short. I, yeah, more, use short, long, short because now I think I'm used to short and short, short, long, short. And now I, it's kind of hard for me to do 575 because it feels really, really long. Rigid. It's almost like you have to use filler words to try and fill out all the syllables and seven syllables is really, really long for, for people who are actually well practiced in, in haiku these days, because we, we value just very few words and then you can create that kind of um, atmosphere or it's just really like a moment, a fragment of your thoughts or, you know, it's just like a moment. Well, thing. I definitely love that you two are out of the box thinkers, but, mm -hmm. um, you know, everybody's entitled to their favorite way of writing poems. I mean, there's odes, yeah. there's sonnets, there's so many different ways. So uh -huh. um, one of the things that's challenging for me is that I didn't have a book to read of all your poems. So, oh. <laughs> and there it is. Good. So what I'd love to do is for you. Yes. Hold up that girl. Oh, I can put it on the screen too here. Um, <coughs> excuse me. Let's see, here she is, that girl. And then um, here's the one that she just read to us, right? Snowy mm -hmm. night, the smell of hot soup. And you illustrated it with a panda? Uh, no, that's actually from the book. That's one of the other poems. Do you want to read mm. the, it's a tanka. Tanka is five line. Instead of three lines, you can also have tanka, which is usually, ends up being a little bit more lyrical there. And then here are some other examples, school swings, only pigeons play. Yeah. You have a nice sense of humor, Zoe. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's actually like during lockdown. So school swings, the kids can't go to school anymore. Only the pigeons are there. Right. And then I like this, um, this last one too, designer pants, grandma <laughs> sews the holes back up. Yeah. That's endearing. Your grandma must have given you a big hug when you heard when she read that one. <laughs> well, sometimes it's imaginary, you know, like <laughs> yeah. It doesn't always have to be like about nature. So this one is that one wasn't actually strictly a haiku. There is also something called senlu. Senlu is about more about. Um, people about humor so if you don't have any kigo which is like a nature word then it can very well be a sendu very also. interesting and then this this one which i thought was very cute trick or treat give out candies on zoom yeah <laughs> also a lockdown haiku you know we we put our candy on a um clothesline with clothespins and the kids had a uh -huh. along the street you know along the sidewalk so they didn't come up to the door we could wave to them from the door but they got to pick their own 
candy. Yeah. That was a lot of fun. Yeah, that and reminds then this me is of the chalk walk. Tell us again about chalk walk. Chalk on the walk. Well, chalk on the walk is when you find um, a haiku and a monoku and you chalk them and you actually give them a small illustration and you also write out their name by who it is. Yeah, we've got the, these two um, Facebook groups just called Chalk on the Walk Haiku and the other one's Chalk on the Walk Monoku and we have about five 500 people, mostly haiku poets, sub uh, subscribe to it. And uh, whenever we chalk something, well, these days it's been raining a lot in Auckland because in winter it just rains a lot. Then we share haika instead. So it's just some um, haika uh, with the image and uh, joining the image with um, po poetry that's called a haika. So that's I've been great. sharing that whenever I can. Yeah. So we, once a here, day. <laughs> right you're you're more into your winter weather your opposite season from us but we're getting ready to do things like um national night out in august which is a national program to bring neighbors together and mm -hmm. and um make a fun evening and i'm thinking i always have chalk for them to draw that but would be a I'm, great this would be a great place to teach yeah. people a haiku and let exactly. them create their chalk on the street uh -huh. yeah well I like what, the rhyme we're... of chalk and walk but Mm -hmm. Where we Very find clever. our inspiration, we just look around in journals. Actually, Zoe has been published in a lot of journals alongside me. There are actually a, a couple of journals I, I haven't managed to get in, and she has. <laughs> so that was fun. So that's great. Congratulations, Zoe. Way to go. Thank you. <laughs> and, you know, I think Elizabeth's comment in chat is so uh, particularly because we're still very much, you know, being aware of this change of socialization mm -hmm. and haiku is healing in so many ways, but especially to talk about these feelings of isolation and um, depression. Yeah. I love that. So the monokus are, are words that are in a shape. Is that what I'm getting? I uh, know it's just like a single, single line haiku. Oh, a single line. That's yeah. right. Because I see well, it's bending down. I was wondering what the shape had to do with it. Yeah, mono stitch. Some people. Call oh, like it. mono. Okay, gotcha. Like mm -hmm. mono, singular. But then you know, uh, I I didn't know this before, but the haiku a haiku can be three lines, but it also can be two or four lines. Yes. I did not know that before. But well, you know, great. like anything. You know we can we can adapt right we can mm -hmm. mold we've got we've got that right side of our brain going we can make all sorts of art yeah but so, as soon as you get up to five lines becomes a tanka and then you also have uh, other forms more recent forms called charita that's six lines broken into three parts one line two lines three lines or in any iteration in any combination of that yeah wow and I'm actually, I've been published in the Charita many, many months. <laughs> oh, good for you. Good uh, that's for you. The, first, uh, the first form that I got, actually got accepted at a journal. So Charita, I encourage people to try as well. Oh, and I invented a form called a Nonaku. Zoe, do you want to talk about a Nonaku? I invented it three months after I started writing poetry. Okay, brilliant woman. Is that on your website too, somewhere? I maybe, but I'm not sure. This is the logo that my eldest daughter Emily she made for me. Well, my my website is in desperate need of an update. Yeah, it's, it's got lots lot of great of, information though. Yeah. But I was just trying to see if the Nanuko. I see the ring. No, 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 it's not the probably not there. Do okay, you well we'll let it. You can explain one? it to us. Okay, so um, there's there's nine lines in a nok naku. Uh, the first line one word, second line two words, three line three words, four line four words, fifth line three words, sixth line two words, and seventh line one word, and then there's just another section for the other two lines or the other two section can actually be on the top. Oh. So 
So it's almost uh, like a mirror. It looks like a mirror then, right? Yeah, it's like it looks an hourglass. Like a mirror. Okay. So you can create some really interesting shapes with the poem. Um, so for example, this one has the two lines before the main body. So it's like a fragment. It's a little bit, I don't know if anybody knows um, about Haibun. It's a little bit like a mini Haibun. So Haibun is kind of a prose part and then you add a haiku at the end, but it can be the other way around. So- Wow, you, you know, you're sounding very scientific to me. It's like <laughs> the, the marriage of science and art here when you start parsing <laughs> poetry like that, that's beautiful. Yeah, we're actually trying to draw inspiration from one another, different art forms. So I feel my music flows into my poetry because when people, I also write a lot of rhymed longer poems inspired by other poetry or sometimes arts or, yeah, um, or music. So Sherry, talk mm -hmm. a little bit about how you started your um, career in music. Where did all that come from? I, I have been trained a musician since I was like three. <laughs> oh, well, my parents just uh, sort of just, uh, oh, well, it's nice, probably a good idea to learn music. So many kids learn music. I, I was that in New Zealand? I won. No, I, I can't. In I can't, Taiwan. I won. Yeah. I, I didn't come to New Zealand until I was at university. Oh, but, okay. Hmm, and yeah. You loved it and decided to stay? Yeah, well, actually, the whole family moved here, so. Wow, like, how regret. convenient. Yeah, and uh, I carry on with music, but then I also went off and did something different, like computer science, and uh, I decided I still like music better, and I just kept on coming back to music. Mm -hmm. And what is your music medium? Tell everybody. I am a pianist, concert pianist and cellist, but um, once I came to New Zealand, I had to make a choice because uh, they told me where well, if you're a performance student, you're not allowed to do other, <laughs> other subjects and you have to choose one instrument. So I had to choose the cello because that, well, that, that way I can work with other people in the orchestra and right. uh, chamber music and uh, as a pianist you kind of you know it's a little bit more solitary yeah yeah but then but I later on I found myself where well, I don't really I didn't really enjoy carrying the cello around especially on the plane it's <laughs> really difficult I had to buy another ticket for the cello if I don't want it to break so which actually happened on the way back from the UK. I, I was trained in the UK after university. And um, on the way back from the UK, uh, the long haul was so long that the fingerboard just came unglued. <laughs> so oh, no. It's got a big scare for me. I'll bet. I'll bet. Mm -hmm. Well, I was going to say a piano is much harder to transport on your back, but a cello is also very difficult. <laughs> and now they make some really cool um, electric cellos and electric basses that look like mm -hmm. um, the original instruments. Uh, you know, they don't look like guitars. They look like, mm -hmm. you know, that beautiful shape. Yeah. Oh, also, they, they have um, carbon fiber instruments these days. Right, right. So do you play... <laughs> are you part of an orchestra or are you kind of an I, well i i have four kids which makes it really hard oh, four. yeah well you can see in the picture behind oh, zoe. Sweet. Yeah. So I thought zoe was a one and only till you mentioned your older daughter doing the drawing <laughs> okay yeah they're all musical so i sometimes have I, I perform online a lot these days since at the end of march Mm -hmm. and uh, I got invited to perform under Live Piano Avengers and uh, I've been having a lot of fun I, so I put together concert programs once a week as uh, something different um, a new program and I just prepare I have three to five days to prepare say 20 to 30 pieces and wow. just learn them and present them online and people really enjoy that Wow, we, we I need to get on that list. That sounds great. <laughs> so within two, so two you, um, mm -hmm. were you inspired? Were you inspired mm -hmm. by Yo Yo Ma and his free concerts that he did out of his living room during COVID? <laughs> I did watch you a little bit of that, but um, it's amazing. Yeah. yeah, but the thing is, I'm just doing it on the audio 
platform. So before it was Clubhouse, now we left Clubhouse and went to Twitter and we got to meet a lot of people there as well. And oh, we I just, see. So this is what this is where you go. So yeah. if we want to hear you play, this is what we can click on. We're on Twitter space. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, but but those those um videos actually probably got deleted because they only just started um, maybe about a week ago to store those videos uh, not not videos sorry those um audios audio files online like permanently before they just delete it once once a month so, ah, so okay. they're all, yeah they're all lost now but that just means so to that's too them. bad but so not on youtube either <laughs> no 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 but oh. that's okay i mean i i actually <laughs> used the part of i put the programs together and played on I just sent you a link on email. I don't know if you have access right now, but yeah, there is the Clavier House um, concert, my very first solo recital given in New York City. <laughs> oh, that's what you, sh you sent me? Yes, yeah. What, you know, is that the YouTube one? Yeah, the YouTube one. So maybe you could um, play a little bit of that too. Okay, just let's see. Quite a lot I can of fun. make that work. I have to do this. Right at the end, I actually played a little bit of cello. A friend of mine who's a, um, yeah, a, a violin dealer and actually lent me a cello, a cello from the 1700s. To wow. All right, let's see if, if this will play. Really if nice. this will play. Look at her, she's checking her phone. Oh, no, I read my, my poetry out of that. Oh, okay. Because I didn't have printer access to print it Does so it the question sound? is will we be able to hear it welcome to my channel recital tonight at Clavier house Here you could yeah you could probably fast forward a little bit because there is a i share poetry and then i played the first piece was with an uh, an old boy's friend she's based in new jersey yeah it's a little bit hard to hear but I, I suppose you can share the link. So that was a one hour recital. Well, this proves that she's really a pian pianist, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> but you can go all the way to the end of it if you like. Um, I was playing cello then. That's but great. It didn't matter. Yeah. So this is an amazing create creative family you have. And um, Tell me more about what you'd like to see in the future for you and maybe your children. Are you going to create an orchestra just of your family? <laughs> oh, well, there was plan of a string quartet. That's why for kids, right? <laughs> but problem is nobody stuck with the string instruments. So they all went off and played uh, woodwind and <laughs> oh that could be fun i suppose they prefer the buttons it's more easy, easier to control i suppose um so can you tell us what the, you guys play i play flute and very nice lovely my brother plays the clarinet my little older sister plays the bassoon and my eldest sister plays the oboe. Well, that sounds like you got to write some music for those instruments. That's <laughs> yeah, I'm going to start. And you can bring it all together with the cello. Probably, probably, yeah, because I have written so much poetry. I wrote all oh, 3,400 and something poems in the last two years. <laughs> Yeah, because I once I started writing, I just couldn't stop. Wow. That is uh -huh. so cool. And there are all sorts of forms as well, because whenever I, I read about a new form, I just try try out as well myself. Mm -hmm. Elizabeth says musical haikus. I agree. And actually, <laughs> I was just talking about this with somebody else. I don't know if you're familiar with Rumi poetry. Um, uh -huh. He was an ancient poet, but yeah. he was... Um, reinterpreted by a southern guy american mm -hmm. uh named coleman barks and he has this deep wonderful what i consider mythical kind of voice mystical kind of voice and when he reads the poetry it just takes on a whole different level 
And that's the yeah. thing about poetry. You know, you read it to yourself and you hear it one way, but you hear it read by somebody else. It's a different story. But when I heard him read the poems, he did it as performance art with musicians who were improving with his words. And it was just beautiful. So maybe there's a, a place in there for, oh, as Elizabeth yeah. suggested, open. the layer of music yeah. underneath or on top. The decoration, yeah. Oh, um, Zoe would like to read a poem, her favorite one from the book that we wrote when she was six. Great. <laughs> the illustrator as well. It's raining cats and dogs. It all started with a single dark cloud. This cloud feeling lonely invited friends over for a party. In a drunken uproar, the clouds started fighting. They began throwing cats and dogs at each other. After hurling thunder and lightning, little Zoe, who never had a pet, came outside with her great big box, collected raindrops filled with cats and dogs. The next day, she put up a sign, which said pets for sale with free ginger ale. Man, customers queued up. So the next time when it pours, I wonder what animals, what other animals will drop from the sky. Perhaps goldfish or sheep I get to bring home and keep. <laughs> yeah. I like a... that one. I like that description. Oh, that... look at the drawing that goes with. Oh, that's great. Yeah, and there's another really funny one as well. It's slightly longer, but um, I think you'll enjoy it because this one, um, yeah, <laughs> has a lot of rhyming. It was one of our, these are all our early poems that we, we wrote in the first half, five months. We put it together just so that we could pretend to be authors at an <laughs> author's book market. <laughs> and her first one, and that at, at the time she was six, six years old. And that was fun. All hail the snail. Dale the snail in exams he failed as he chewed up too much kale and, and stole the holy grail. He got sent to jail just before he set sail. From jail, he broke out, but left a trail, making him easy to trace, track, and nail. Dale lost his tail just before he made bail in a fight with Constable, 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 Constable Quail. By rail, he ran hiding under a pail of ale. He went into, he went to the sea and met a whale by the name of Gabrielle, who became his, who became his pal. Too bad that Dale turned so pale, for the ocean offered no veggie for sale. He wailed and yelled and cursed and spat. Nearly into water, <clears throat> he fell this moment. Just as well when a friendly seagull from Yale caught his smell, picked him up, and cured his ale. Huh? Tired of running, Dale sent a mail to say sorry via a mate in his old sail. Having been through hell, he threw in the towel and would no longer brow or yell. At early hours on Sundays in market, we still see Dale, although a male, till the strike of midday church bells. He wears an apron and a veil. Now, Dale, now a bit frail, would sell pretty shells, speaking in accents with heavy vowels. And that includes our tale of Dale, all hail the snail, his, his adventure shall prevail. Wow, that is an epic poem. 
And then look at the picture she drew. So we are, um, I'm going to send this link to everybody before I have to close up because we are right at the end of our half hour. All right. But I want to thank everybody for joining us. I want to thank Sherry and especially Zoe for waking up early on her day off. And Can we do Sherry... one last thing? Because we have a new journal. Oh, yeah. Um, so we're going to be making a new journal called Haiku Zoo, only from ages 20 and under are allowed to submit. Oh, yeah. that sounds very ageist to me. I don't know if I like <laughs> that. <laughs> if you have kids or grandkids or... We'll get them involved. Oh, you're sweet. Yeah. Thank In you all. Language and English, yes. And feel free, like I said before, you can always um, connect up with Zoe through her or through with Sherry through her website and Zoe as well. And just keep being creative. And I hope you all learned something today. Thumbs up. <laughs> Excellent. All right. We'll talk again soon. Thank Bye, you. everybody. Bye. Bye.